Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Pursuit of Cabin Living series by Four Expedition. I'm Scott Luthold. Well, it's mid-August, and we've got a lot of our framing done on the cabin. We're making pretty good progress considering the weather last week and the week before that was very, very rainy. We've had some record rains here. After talking with some of the local friends that we've made here, it turns out that the rainfall here has probably uh, been more significant than the rainfall of the last 40 years in the summer season. So pretty significant rainfall, and I think that's really great. It's definitely making the forest look healthy and replenishing our, our water supply here. So that's really wonderful, especially considering a lot of the other parts of the West are really suffering. I'm, I'm just feeling very grateful for our weather patterns here. Nonetheless, uh, this week it's been very clear, and so we've been able to get a lot of framing done. I think uh, today's Saturday, so by Monday of this week, by the end of day Monday, we should have um, the roof rafters on, and then we'll start drying it all in. Unfortunately, our windows aren't going to come for another month. That's just the nature of things with the pandemic and all of that. But uh, they will come, and we'll get it all dried in probably by close to the end of September. In the meantime, while the windows are still in shipment, I'll be working on finishing out the outside, framing out the bathroom and the closet on the inside, and then getting all of the uh, shiplap. We'll probably do um, shiplap interior and then, of course, get all the uh, insulation in and all of that. Uh, as far as bathrooms concerned, we're probably going to do a composting toilet system this year. Next year, we plan on building a barn, in which case we'll probably drill a well. Well, not probably. We will drill a well and we'll put in a septic system and we'll take care of all the septic next year. This year, we're going to use a composting toilet system. We've got our water uh, supply. Uh, as you've seen in the past, we've got our water supply system pretty much set up. We did get our pump finally shipped to us. So we're going to get that installed. Uh, we've been making a lot of decisions lately. One of the things that we had to decide on was whether or not we were going to do a wood burning stove or a pellet stove. And we went back and forth and back and forth and finally decided on a pellet stove with an inverter and a, a, a bank of 12 volt batteries to make sure that if the power does go out, the pellet stove keeps churning away. One of our neighbors has a really cool setup. We're kind of doing a similar setup to what he's got and uh, yet he's got a much larger home. His pellet stove, I believe he said his pellet stove will heat his house, which is about 2,000 square feet. We've only got about 600 square feet, so we did a much smaller model, but it's the same setup. So I'm really excited to get all that working and installed, and um, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, the cabin itself is uh, doing really well on the inside as well. Uh, we've uh, put poly on the on the wood floors finally, We've got our kitchen kind of in working order, so we should have the main cabin pretty well situated with this pellet stove coming this week, and, and I'm pretty excited about that. This, the, uh, as I mentioned, the season has been pretty rainy, and so a lot of the local people have been saying that they believe that winter is going to come early this year. I think on average we do get some snowfall here in October, but the main sto snow starts to fall in November. And then in early December is when the ski resort finally opens. A lot of people are saying that they think we might get snow in September. You know, that's okay. As long as we get everything dried in and we can work on the inside of the cabin, uh, even after the, the colder weather starts to come. As long as we have heat, we have electricity, we have running water, we have heated running water, all of that uh, is all I'm really concerned about. In the meantime, we'll probably work on getting the exterior completed while the weather's still nice. I'd like to get the, the, the exterior completely done. We're going to do some corrugated roofing and we're going to do some rough sawn pine on the exterior. And then we have some stone that we've had shipped to us. It's a cultured stone that we're going to have put on the outside. We're going to do that ourselves. Anyway, so we've got a lot going on. It's, it's really exciting out here. The weather's been wonderful this week. We've been able to get a lot done. We've also been able to get out and do some really nice outdoor adventures around the area, and we've got a little bit of that seeded through this video. So I'm really looking forward to sharing this episode with you. So sit back and enjoy the ride. All right, so so far we've got the plate going in here. We've already got the plate almost done all the way around the other side.
All right, so first things first, I got this really nice DeWalt grinder. The reason I chose DeWalt, and, and to be honest, when it comes to grinders, I sort of prefer Makita, but I already have a DeWalt cordless drill that has the batteries and the battery chargers, and they work with this as well. I bought this grinder for a couple of reasons. First of all, there's a lot of little cuts that I need to make here and there that I don't really have the right saw to be able to cut. So this is going to help with that. And being wireless, that's also really nice. The other thing that I bought this for is all of our cultured stone that's going to go on the end of the addition has now arrived at um, our supplier here in town. So I'm going to be using this, and Heather and I are going to be using this quite a bit to be cutting that cultured stone to fit in different areas. A lot of times when you have an open space on a wall and you're needing to fit a piece of cultured stone in, you have to cut that uh, cultured stone to fit. So this is going to help a lot with that. These things are really expensive. I went to Ace Hardware yesterday. I got a completely metal frame, metal scoop wheelbarrow. It's a beautiful wheelbarrow. It's over $100. It's got rubber handles on it. It's really great. We're going to be using this for until until, until the end of time. But uh, nonetheless, right after we bought that, we're driving down the road. There's a guy that's got like a flea market on the side of the road, and he had a metal one for sale on the side of the road. It had a flat tire. We thought, oh, geez, we could have bought that. But I did notice it had... Um, it had wood handles, and ultimately, long term, it wouldn't have been the greatest wheelbarrow. I probably would have gotten it a lot cheaper, but I've got this awesome wheelbarrow now. All right, up next, we got ourselves a shop vac. I don't know how many times Heather and I have said over the last couple of weeks, we really need to have a shop vac. We really should have a shop vac. We, you know, if we had a shop vac, we'd be cleaning this up, we'd be cleaning that up. So we ended up finally getting a shop vac. All right, so I'm not a big fan of Craftsman, to be honest, but we got ourselves a six gallon craftsman shop vac down at ace hardware so we're really happy to have that it is a gorgeous blue sky day here it is supposed to rain later today and i've got to get into the the foundation area and i've decided i'm going to dig out the uh the crawl space a little bit better so that there's more room to crawl, crawl around under there and now's the time to be doing that before i put the subfloor in because once the subfloor is in then it's dark underneath there and i can crawl around but I'm going to get all that taken care of. Plus, we're going to be putting in some PVC piping. I ordered a new pump that's going to come hopefully later on this week to pump our water and uh, get some of those kinds of uh, little logistical things taken care of before we put the subfloor down. I'm hoping to have the subfloor down before the end of the week, and then early next week, we're going to frame. All right, so some of you might be saying to yourself, how come he didn't do this before he put the joists in? Well, you know, sometimes hindsight's twenty twenty. I finally got the joists in. I climbed underneath there and crawled around myself, and I thought to myself, you know, doing this a couple of times in the dark is probably not going to be ideal. So there's a couple slopes in here anyway. So I'm going to take all the dirt out of the middle here. I'm going to push it out toward the sides, level this all off. And uh, there's also some concrete remnants under there. It does make for a nice firm surface, but I'm still going to level all that off as well. I'll tell you one thing. One thing you probably don't take into consideration when you're thinking about buying a cabin up in a high elevation. I came from about 2,000 feet in elevation down in Carefree Cave Creek, Arizona, and uh, up here, the cabin's sitting at around 9,000 feet in elevation. So the simplest of tasks, like using this guy to dig out a couple of inches of dirt, ten generally tends to be a little bit more exhausting than you're probably used to. So you need to take that into consideration on how much you can get done in a particular hour of work. I've definitely slowed down since I've been up here. I've been working really hard to increase my energy and you know, expand my lungs and all of that. But in the meantime, I've got to work really hard. It's a great workout. I need to get exercise and I've not been working out in a gym since I moved up here. So this is my workout. And I think it's going to be a really great workout with a lot of great fresh air, but take that into consideration. What's 
the song that people used to sing like when they're digging trenches in prison. Yeah. Is that the song from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean? Ho ho. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think so, but that's the What's song. the song that everybody sings when they're on the chain gang? Chain gang. Chain gang, right. Like oh, ee -oh. Oh, 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 I don't know if that's it. I don't think so. Like, uh, it's Man of Constant Sorrow, some, that movie oh, with the... Man of Constant, yeah, I remember that movie. And they're all in the... I tell you what, this is definitely the Rocky Mountains. We got some good-sized foot... Put uh, diameter boulders here. So instead of dumping this just like in the in the trees, we're going to use it to put a bank right here for water runoff, snow runoff, all that good stuff. Hey, good job, muscles. <laughs> Shoot, the next one's my turn, I think. Got it, muscles? <laughs> it's funny how many, whoa, you got it, you got it. Funny how many, <laughs> push, push. I don't know, you gonna go through the hole? Oh, <laughs> you got it, ah, boom, nice. It's funny how many people that watch this channel talk about her muscles. In fact, I've been criticized quite a bit that she's got bigger <laughs> muscles than I do. <laughs> yeah, looks pretty darn true to me. Way to go, sport. That's just a baby. He's just a baby. <laughs> yeah, tell him about that key we found. <laughs> the key. So when we were cleaning out the cabin earlier, this last month um, behind the clock like all these pictures around the wall behind the clock was this key and it was just sitting there all perfectly like to something not for the door actually there was no keys because we didn't have keys in the <laughs> um, and so we looked on everything and tried to figure out what it was but we haven't figured it out yet so maybe there's a buried treasure somewhere under here where we need that key so you think we're digging this out because we need to have a crawl space but really we're digging this out because we're hoping to find a treasure looking for buried treasure she got legs. Woohoo! <laughs> Comes the big dog. One nice thing when you're being the filming person, you don't have to do the work. <laughs> yeah, pick those up, get those. <laughs> All right, before we put our subfloor down, I've rigged up a system to be able to fill up the water tank from the side of the house because we're going to be transporting our own water um, probably, I would say, once or twice a month. And I wanted to make it easy and convenient to be able to fill the 500-gallon water tank that sits underneath the, the addition. So here's what I did. So I haven't cemented this yet. I do have this nice little cap that will sit on the top so we can keep any impurities and bugs out. And so we're gonna go ahead and test it with a water brick. So run that. And over here on this end, as you can see, the water comes out just fine. I'm gonna drill a hole in the top of the tank right there and then put a 45 in there as well, or maybe even a 90 and then drop it down in. All right, that's good. So about a week ago, I brought my motorcycle out from the storage unit that I have in town out to the shed here. And uh, some of you have probably seen my bike before. I have a KTM 390 Adventure, and I've never really ridden it with another person, this particular bike. And so Heather and I decided we're going to go out for a ride.
Well, good morning, my friends. It's another beautiful day in paradise. Boy, we had a really good time yesterday. We ended up going to a pig roast here in the valley with some of our neighbors. Had a really wonderful time. Met lots of really great people and really just very pleasantly surprised by the kindness and uh, and uh, the welcome that we've received from a lot of the neighbors here. Well, today we're gonna close up this deck and we'll be ready to put the, the framing on top and hopefully we'll do that this coming week. So this is our last piece. So exciting. Well, getting 16 on center, we put this little door hatch down here to be able to access the water tank and the water pump. And then there'll be a crawl under here so I can get to other kinds of things over here. But we're uh, now that we got this in, we're gonna put a 16 on center joist across here. It's the last joist. And then over here, we're gonna put another little trap door to be able to look down into the main water tank opening here. So in the winter time, when we're filling up the water tank, I've got a PVC going over there to a water tank um, valve, you open that up, put a hose in, it runs the water in here. And then while I'm filling, Heather can be in here looking to make sure that it's not gonna overflow. I've got a couple uh, little two-way radios. We'll be able to talk to each other that way. So that's pretty much how we're going to manage this water system. All we have left here now is this joist, and then we're gonna put in our uh, our 30, R30 batting, and then we'll put our OSB on top of that, and then we're gonna put some Thompson water seal on top of the OSB because it's supposed to rain today and tomorrow. And then we should be ready to start framing. All right, now that we've finished with the joist, we're gonna go ahead and put the R30 batting in. I bought about five stretches of that, which should be enough to fill this whole area. Uh, in order to hold the batting up, we were gonna put some string along the bottom and staple them to the joist. However, Heather had this really great idea to just wrap the joist. We've got a ton of this kite string. We started at the end with a nail and we just wrapped the joist, stretched, wrapped the joist, stretched, wrapped the joist, stretched all the way down. We're gonna put this string probably every couple of feet wide so it'll go all the way up. And then once we're done with that, we'll put the OSB on. We're gonna glue that down, put the OSB down. We'll screw the OSB boards down and then we'll put uh, Thompson water seal over the top because it is supposed to rain later on today. And after that, we'll be done. You have to go this way okay. with the staple gun. <laughs> things are going to expand and fill up the entire shed. All right, we're done with the insulation, ready to get going with the OSB. We didn't really have to do much cutting at all. These bat pieces came in just really perfect sizes. All right, we're getting ready to lay our first piece of OSB. We're gonna start on this corner here, and we're going eight feet that way, four feet this way, and then their tongue and grooves, so they lock together. Good. All the way around 
the back. And we have our dining group. So we got three OSB boards laid down. Tell me what's the difference between the three. There's one that's different than the others. Well, it wasn't until after we laid the second one down that we realized the OSB has six, 16 on center lines to line everything up. And uh, we already laid the first one down, already glued it and screwed it. So it is what it is. But uh, now we've learned our lesson, learned a new uh, trick of the trade, and we're getting ready to lay our fourth one down. Have to hammer that in. The last piece. Hello. Well, what do you think? It looks like we made a really big bed, like a quadruple king <laughs> with the pillow. Just put the there. pillows up on the end. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Job done well or a job well done? <laughs> job well done. <laughs> nice job. Well, we got this thing all done. Just before the rain started coming down again, we went out and bought some better tarps. And uh, now we're ready for the next phase. Yay! Yay. So an interesting thing happened the other day. We went to a pig roast on Saturday here in the in the valley. Some local neighbors decided they were going to hold a, a pig roast. There was a couple of birthday parties being celebrated, and we were invited to come along. So Heather and I went out there and had a really good time. Beautiful home up on a ridge, a nice ranch house. Met lots of wonderful people. However, after I left there, I came home, and Heather and I decided to uh, set up a two-person hammock and swing in the hammock a little bit and just relax. And all of a sudden, uh, as, we're, as we're sitting in the hammock, I heard a car door. And I looked over the side of the hammock, and there was a, a guy in my driveway. And for some reason, he decided it was okay to ignore all of my no trespassing signs. And so I walked over to the car, and he introduced himself. And he was a very cordial gentleman, um, but very direct. And he asked me, he said, are you the guy that's filming for YouTube? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, you know, I... Uh, from what I understand, you've been trespassing on my property. And he proceeded to tell me which, which property or what, what piece of land was his that uh, Heather and I had apparently been trespassing on. And it turns out that uh, th one of the last videos that I produced and put out where we walked around the pond, that most of you probably recall, some part of that was on private property. And so from my perspective, there were no signs up that said no trespassing, uh, there's an area around my property that is Bureau of Land Management and I went ahead and took the liberty of getting a permit with the state trust and so I'm able and allowed to be out on that property within certain parameters that you have to abide by when you get a permit. So I was under the impression that all of that land back there all the way out to this particular highway was Bureau of Land Management and that the ranchers that were using that land were under lease with the Bureau or with the State Trust. And that is something that the State Trust will allow as long as ranchers get the proper permitting. And as long as somebody like myself doesn't interfere with the cattle and those kinds of things, it's perfectly fine for me to be on the State Trust land. But apparently some of that land that I figured was a State Trust or Bureau of Land Management turned out to be private property. So the guy came over here and he said that he heard that I had been on his property and that he wasn't gonna have it. And I, of course, shook his hand and introduced myself and um, told him it wouldn't happen again. But I think that's really interesting. Um, I would say about a, about a year ago, I put out a video that talked about how the West was becoming so uh, fenced in. And I, I think it's, it's people's prerogative to be able to buy property just like me. And it's their prerogative to be able to do what they want on that property. And it's their prerogative to keep other people off of the property. I would just ask that people that own private property that could be confused with BLM put up signs that say no trespassing. And so nonetheless, that beautiful pond that Heather and I went out to that we thought maybe we'd be able to snowshoe out to and do some ice skating on and so forth, 
turns out to be private property. The real shame in all of that is that, um, you know, I'm just such a nature advocate and I'm a, I'm a conservationist and a preservationist and I respect nature, you know, to the utmost respect. And uh, our purpose for being out there and checking it out was only simply to enjoy the beauty of nature. Now, I could probably reach out to the owners and ask them if I could spend some time on their property from time to time. They might not want me to film on it, which I would totally understand and respect. But nonetheless, it is their property. And so a lot of these beautiful spots around the area that I would like to be able to spend some time, I'm probably not going to be able to. And I'm not going to be able to share it with you. Now, having said that, in this region, there are just countless opportunities to find extraordinary beauty in nature. Um, there's amazing hunting grounds, there's alpine lakes, and there's forest roads that go on and on and on and on. So I'm not going to be at all short on finding beautiful nature experiences to share with all of you. However, in the local area, there are some areas that I'm no longer going to be able to go. Nonetheless, uh, to my neighbors, if you're watching this, I apologize for spending any time on your property. I honestly did not know that it was private property. I truly felt like and believe that it was state trust land. And so hope you'll forgive me and hope we can, hope we can get off to a better start in the future. He was all concerned about driving on my grass. <laughs> all right, everybody, today we got our cultured stone delivered. This is going to go on the new edition. This is called, uh, it's by a company called El Dorado Stone. This is Cypress Ridge Orchard. Beautiful stuff. I've done a lot of stone work in the past. We're going to put this on the end of the edition, and then I'm going to do what's called over grouting. So you put the grout in between, and then you rake it over and make it look like sort of an old world Italian cottage look and that uh, should be pretty nice so my neighbor came by with a z-bike and he offered me a little ride on it this is called a Ciron. it's an asian made bike i think you can get them on amazon maybe but i thought i'd give it a little spin he offered to let me ride it so i'm going to go ahead and give it a ride apparently it's got sport mode and uh the ep mode ep mode is more like um i guess moped and sport mode gets you up to about 40 miles an hour it's got a pretty cool aftermarket LED light on the front here. Check that out. So let's go for a little spin. I've seen him drive this thing around. I thought how fun it would be to get one of these. So we've got it on. This should be it. <laughs> oh dear. And he's gone. I can just imagine now, we're gonna end up with two of those. Who's gonna break their neck first? Not me. Crazy man. Wonder how fast that was. <laughs> this thing hauls balls. So, What's so when I came by here the first and second time, I was in EP mode. That was the slow mode. When I got out onto the main road, I put it in sport, and this thing hauled up to about 40 miles an hour. This thing is awesome. You want to give it a try? So we're going to get a couple. We're going to get some of these. Oh, you dear. want to try it? No, look what I'm wearing. Just a little spin. Just a little spin.
<laughs> we need some of these. <laughs> Maybe. So you think we should get some? Two. Get two. <laughs> In our truck. Really yeah. Lightweight. Really lightweight. I mean, it's basically a cross between a dirt bike and a mountain bike. That's pretty sweet. So this is the cabinet that's going to go in our kitchen. And this is going to be the island. So this uh, this side here will face the stove. And this is where we'll keep our pots and pans and things. And then we're having a butcher block made for the top of this. That's going to come out to about here. And then we're going to have some really cool pedestal legs made. So that'll be pretty neat. It'll be a breakfast bar. As always, Mexican made furniture is always extremely heavy. Because it's very solid, very durable. Yay. But it's also extremely heavy. So I get the heavy side. What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> All right, you ready? Here we go. There's nothing to grab. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready. <laughs> ready. We can do it this way. That's what I was planning on. Oh, I'm just looking from the bottom. So which way are you going to go? I was going to grab onto up here. We're too short for that. Yeah, but this shows off your moose gloves. Okay. On three. <laughs> Five, four, three. <laughs> <laughs> There's nowhere to put your feet. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> There's nowhere to. Like you gotta do this. <laughs> Honey, I love you. It's all this good. This much. This much. <laughs> Let's do it. <sighs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, right? <laughs> do, I'm doing it again. Show me those little footsteps. We do, 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 do. It's exactly. Maybe we gotta do it this way. You gonna walk backwards? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Alright, ready? Can't we just do <coughs> this way from the bottom? <coughs> we can lay it on the side. Yay, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> It is easier. It is easier. Good idea. <laughs> Alright, I'm going up a step. Ish. Whoa. <laughs> we didn't even unlock the cabin. Maybe oh. we should just set it down right here. Well, let's get up on the ledge. That's right. Oh. Alright. Okay. Right, tip it this way. There you go. I don't remember being this big. Give me the keys. Oh, quality furniture. What do you think, Oakley? You approve? Yeah. I don't know, he's undecided. Undecidedly. Uh, oh, Ooh, you're giving him the eye. Yeah, you're good. Undecidedly so. Give me the keys. As you can see, we still don't have our cabinetry in all the way. But uh, this piece here, it's gonna be flipped the other direction so we can put pots and pans in it, as I mentioned already, but the back of it's finished very similarly. So that we put it in here this way, just to be able to see how it looks. It's nice to have a, a pretty piece of furniture in here. You like it? I do. Should we flip it around just to see? Yeah, let's flip it around. All right, so it's an exciting day today. Getting started putting up walls, We're doing our framing. Hopefully it won't take more than a couple of days. Got all of our wood here. Uh, there's a little bit of a cloud cover today. It looks like it could, uh, could rain, but um, there's no rain in the forecast today. So we're gonna get started.
right, my friends, another day of framing completed. We're gonna take a day or two off. We got a lot of other things we need to do, but as you can see here, we got the top beam in. We got our all of our windows cut in, the rough openings. And uh, starting Monday, we're gonna go ahead and do the rafters. And then after that, we'll put on the exterior uh, plywood. And then we'll be ready to go on starting our exterior and interior finishes. What's your thought? <laughs> My thought is I'm hungry and it's almost time for ice cream. Ice cream time. Ice cream time. <laughs> All right, let's Otherwise, go do that. I love it. <laughs> All right, well, that's a wrap for today. Yeah. Heather wore her rubber boots today so she could go in the water. Somebody's fishing pole. <laughs> Rainbow trout in here. All right, my friends, I think that's it for this episode of the Pursuit of Cabin Living series by 4Expedition. I really hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed creating it. If you haven't become a subscriber to the 4Expedition channel, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. Of course, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when videos go live. And if you consider yourself to be an adventurer and you're looking for an adventure community, consider joining Team 4X by going to 4Expedition.com join to learn more. Until the next time, take care. <laughs>